Yo, what's going on guys? Gonna be showing you how to carry on Kel here in season 12. For your best runes possible, take lethal tempo with presence of mind alacrity, last stand with second win and overgrowth with attack speed, AD and resistance. Since we're against Teemo, we're gonna take magic resist. If you're up against an Irelia or Riven, obviously take armor. Kel, it's mainly about figuring out how much survivability do you need to take. So against Teemo, he's constantly gonna be poking us. So obviously we're gonna want second win instead of conditioning and we're going to want dorn shield your main survivability options on kel are second win dorn shield and fleet footwork i decided we didn't need fleet footwork fleet footwork is the one that heals you when you auto attack it stacks up and then you can use it again and get a little heal the thing about fleet footwork though is it it hurts your late game having lethal tempo gives you insane carry potential and fleet footwork pulls against that so that's why i'm saying you need to figure out how much survivability you need that way you can uh, maximize your damage output. So he's not pressuring us, that's nice. He's just trying to farm. On Kel, you generally wanna start E level one. It doesn't cost you any mana. He didn't pressure us for that, so I went in for the auto. If people aren't gonna pressure you for a minion, don't use your E, just auto it. So he's not pressuring, we're just gonna take it with the auto. Because then when they do decide to pressure, you can then use your E. So just look at them when you go in. If you can tell they're gonna hit you, just use your E. It makes your next auto attack range and it does bonus damage. It does more bonus damage the lower on health it is. So th this guy's playing extremely passive. He's just trying to get his last hits, which is great for us. We might get, just give up that minion. Not a big deal, giving up, I guess, two range creeps. We still got the XP though, and we're keeping our HP high. He's making himself gankable and we're not gankable. We'll hit him with a Q, E, it didn't look like the best trade at face value, but we do have D shield in second win. Generally, when you trade with enemy champions, you do want to Q them before you E. That way, more of your uh, E damage connects since your Q shreds magic resistant armor. Auto attack E reset. Yeah, he's playing super, super aggro. He just set himself up to get ganked. Sure enough, that's what happens. We're gonna heal a Hecarim, auto attack, E reset. And we're so tanky that we're not gonna die. We could honestly just freeze it from this position. Teemo doesn't have TP and he has a significant minion advantage. On Kel, you should never really ever get solo kills pre six. The enemy opponent's gonna have to be making some pretty gnarly mistakes. So what's gonna end up happening is you're just gonna farm, play it safe and if your jungler comes to gank, there's a decent chance it's a kill, but it's not really guaranteed. The wave's in a good spot, so I'm just going to reset. We're going to look to get wit's end first. It's a 62% win rate on Cal if you get it rushed. So that's what we're going to be doing. Wit's end is insane. It's why Cal has such good win rates versus magic damage top laners. Wit's end gives you movement speed when you hit them, <laughs> so you can stay on top. Plus, obviously, lots of attack speed, decent damage. That blind art is extremely annoying. We took way too much damage there. We should have just pulled back. There's no reason for us to take all of that. Your Q is a good tool if there's a lot of minions low on HP. Since you're gonna end up shoving the wave with it. You don't wanna do it unless it's gonna give you really good value. He's not pressuring us for that minion too much. Then he hits us with an auto Q. Go ahead, stop pop, popping some refills. Auto attack E reset. Oh man, that's unfortunate. Missing more minions than I would like. I'm gonna stop trying to poke him as much so we can focus on these. He's just gonna perma shove and he's gonna end up missing a lot of, he's gonna perma shove and try to make us miss a lot of minions. As long as we're still getting most of them, it's fine. The thing is, whenever he blinds us, we can't use our E because it's an auto attack and we can't auto attack. So if we're stepping up to the last hit and he blinds us, obviously that's not great. Because we're going to end up missing it. Hide and bush a little bit. Starting to put a little more pressure on so we're going to have to max range farm with uh, E a little bit. We'll still step up to hit a minion and if he doesn't pressure us for it, then we'll just go ahead and take it. That one he's pressuring, so we just pull back, max range farm it, and then we heal up with our second wind D shield, constantly healing us every time we get hit. 
He doesn't pressure us for this one because he's trying to farm. So we take it for free with the auto. And then we can get this one with our E. The biggest mistakes we've made this game is just stepping up for minions where it doesn't make sense and losing way too much HP. But since, since we took the right runes in build, he hasn't really been able to kill us off of it. We're still able to sustain ourselves, our HP quite high. And now we have ranged autos at level six. You can start to more consistently trade and CS. Level 11 is when you can start to consistently get kills because your damage output gets crazy high. Now, since all of our autos are ranged, we can contest pretty much every single minion. Didn't want to miss that. He blinded us, lol. Got it. Got it. In a really good spot. He can't kill us, and he's ending up shoving wave a lot because he's playing so aggressive. It puts us in a spot where we're difficult to gank, and he's easy to gank. So if Hecarim had come back at any point, this guy would be dead. Simultaneously, Vigo's not going to want to gank us because we're pretty much underneath turret. Like this, this gank is just bad. Got the kill. Latimo with the Q. Don't use your R too early. Make them overcommit for it. If you just are like, don't think, oh, I R, don't fight me now. You, when you R, you want them to think, oh crap, she has R. So just don't use it too early. Don't show your hand. That being said, if they're if a big CC is coming and you know you're gonna die before that CC ends, then sure you have to R in that case. Auto attack E reset. Missed that one. That's fine. We'll go ahead and reset. This is a decent time to do so. Show me that with and boy. Got heartbound axe. We'll grab pickaxe. And I'm not even going to get a controller. Viego ganks are very weak. What you saw there is one of the only other times you're going to get kills on Kel pre-level 11. Is if they try to dive you. So if you get a gank, you can get a kill. If they try to dive you, you can get a kill. But in terms of just raw killing power and stickiness, Kel pre-level 11 doesn't really have it. Now, if you take Ghost, that's a different story. But also, if you take Ghost, it, it's risky. Because if you take Ghost and they end up ganking you a lot pre-6, it can put you in a spot where it delays your level 6 heavily and you can't get back to lane properly. Yeah, this is perfect. You don't want to be shoving in a Kel like this. At the same time, if Kel has you shoved in and your jungler isn't helping you, it's really hard to deal with because she has a lot of range with her Q. But uh, this isn't shouldn't be what he's doing. Viego's bot side. We could actually shove this right now. I'm going to be patient, though. They do have Galio R. They could whip on me. Yeah, I'll just let him push me in. That's fine. I'm okay with that. Is that big AOE on our Q? If you want to shove waves, your Q's perfect. Just put it through the center mass of the minions and push the whole thing. This gank set up pretty easy for Hecarim. Looks like Timo sees it coming though. I healed him to just speed him up. Timo ended up burning flash, so it is what it is. So remember, level 11, level 6, you can start trading a little bit, and but mainly farm easier. Yes, farm easier, more consistent trades, level 11, that's when you can actually start to pull the Uno reverse card. We have the wave in a soft freeze type of position. It's not a true freeze because he doesn't have enough minions. That's kind of awkward. I accidentally queued the minion instead of just pressing E on it. I needed the E as an auto attack reset. Got a bit of damage on Teemo, but he finally crashed the wave. I'm gonna E for that, Q for that, don't wanna miss him. 
We have our passive fully stacked there, now it's off. We obviously, each passive stack gives you attack speed, and when it's fully stacked, you get extra movement speed as well. Yeah, he doesn't want to deal with it. Yeah, oh, this is bad. I don't really want to fight right now. It's super forced versus Teemo to, for us to be doing heavy fights with his blind art. I'm going to have to shove this. Hecarim's not leaving me much choice. This is just such a bad fight. We can't chase it. I'm having to chase through Teemo mushrooms. It's just not going to turn out well. I could always TP back, I guess. We lost a lot of uh, HP from that. We have minion advantage, so it doesn't seem like he really wants to fight on top of this. Auto attack Q, got the wave shoved. So I'm talking about with the wave push, it's actually really high. Do a little bit of damage, auto attack E reset on his head. And now we'll look for the reset. Hopefully I'm not sitting right near a mushroom where it doesn't go off, but it barely has vision on me. That would be tragic. I think it's time we go for oracles. Teemo, once he's six, it's worth having. We'll grab boots and we'll even get a control word and head back to lane. We're almost level 11. I'm gonna start giga pushing the waves, even if Viego's fed. I think we can get away with it with oracles. Viego's in my jungler's jungle. The game's tied. It's time for the carry mode. The only tool they have to deal with me is if Viego somehow lands stun, I'll be in big trouble. Other than that, Teemo Blind Art will slow me down. That's about it. After wit's end, you usually want to go for a Nash into your Mythic. This dude's landing a lot of mushrooms. I'm glad I had Sweeper. It already earned its value. <laughs> Have our passive fully stacked. It's lots of uh, attack speed. That's so dumb. <laughs> He's just using the mushrooms to like kind of push. I think Galio's coming. I got a ward. He was posturing. Diego might be on his way or something. He keeps blinding me so I can't hit him with my E. We might have to go for Merc Treads this game. As long as we keep pushing the wave, it's fine because it forces him to leave the bush. Oh, we got him with that E, nice. I mean with that Q. Auto attack E reset. Oh, the turret killed us. <laughs> we burned flash for that too. Not the end of the world, but also not ideal. I think we should go for Merc Treads just because of his blind art. Berserks are really good on her, but uh, in times like this, I would rather have Mercs. Plus they have triple magic damage champs with the Galio Rock Atimo. I can't believe that shot floated in so late. We flashed autoed him to finish him off. We could have just left, left it as is, but might as well take the kill. If we had played it slightly differently, like maybe walked into the turret shot, we might have lived. It's fine. I'm going to go back to pushing. Level 11, might as well. Level 1 through 6. It's just about getting by and not dying. Once you're level 6, you can farm for pretty much free. Do some trades. Level 11. You need to put the paint on them. Yeah, these auto attack cues. Good thing I have so much magic resist. Magic resist on the wit's end. We have attack damage on wit's end, on hit damage, and movement speed. We can even use our E to push. 
At level 11, your E is up. AoE. He's going to miss a lot of minions off this. Vigo's not even up here. That wasn't worth for him at all. Got him with a Q. This is actually really dangerous. I shouldn't be doing this. Good thing I have that. Okay, Viego's bot side. It's safe again. Can't believe Timo went all the way around. AoE's even off of the turret, so keep that in mind. I'll attack Q. We have a lot more CS than him. We've been farming more patiently. He's Whenever you're more aggressive, a lot of times it hurts your CS score. Especially if you're not hyper-disciplined. If you ever give up a CS just to poke, if you're not converting kills off of it, then it's not really worth it. Yeah, this sweeper's already paid for its weight heavily. Go ahead and heal myself. I'm high mana. You almost never want to heal yourself just for the sake of, oh, you know, it's up. I might as well heal myself because it's a long cooldown. It's a heavy mana cost. But if you're full mana, then you, you kind of might as well. All these mushrooms, dude. So troll. I think he's dead. Got him. Got him. Your R lasts for a really long time. Each point you get into it, it's substantially better. Because when you first get it, whenever you are, you're comp you can't auto for like the full duration. Then the second level up, you get a half a second of like, you get to hit them. So we basically got to hit him with a free auto there where he still couldn't hurt us. Our R is also doing decent damage. I mean, 434, that's solid really solid think about it he has ignite and he's not able to do anything to us at this point this is the kale scale correct items correct build even with an annoying champion like teemo blind that was greedy of him he barely got away he's so fast I'm surprised he could break away from me there. After that knock up, got to just disengage. Blocked his body with my face. Timo's gonna get top turret, most likely. I mean, he's in there somewhere. I'm not gonna die for it. I can't get the top turret in time. So I'll let him have that. He should really let me have this up. I can do a lot more with the red buff than him because I'm ranged. Alrighty, go ahead and reset. Actually like a little bit more gold, but guess it is what it is. I can go farm top and then look for the reset, get my wits not wits, but Nash in the Rift Maker. Kraken isn't really the thing anymore on Kel. It makes you really squishy compared to having a little bit of extra health. It also doesn't heal you. So, Kraken not really worth it. You already have enough damage on Kel, consistent AoE shred to where Kraken isn't necessary at all. Bonk. Vega's a little out of position here. Oops, stepped on that. He's a little bit scary because if he lands a stun on me, he'll shred me really fast. So if, he, if he's revving a stun, I don't think I'm gonna be able to dodge it for whatever reason. It would make sense just to drop R on myself. It's because Viego, stun, auto attack, Q, auto, you come out of the stun, you're already nearly dead. Something you want to look for before you drop R if possible, try to use all your abilities. That way you can get them on cooldown, you come out of R and they'll be close to coming back up. So don't just raw R yourself and not be using your abilities. 
That would be an oof. Be a big oof. Ah, oh, rip. I mean, we have red buff, my friend. He just sped up away. I sped up into him. And he's like, nah. He's like, maybe, maybe I shouldn't. I don't know where this guy went. He ran all the way home. Vigo's bot side, so I'm gonna kite away from that. Auto attack E reset. My red buff just wore off. I'm gonna heal myself to outrun his taunt. You get shredded, of course. Your heal is an extremely important tool. You don't cancel any abilities when you cast it, so whenever you need the speed up is mainly when you're gonna use it. Whether it's to dodge a skill shot like I just did or to just escape. You can use it just to heal a teammate, but the heal itself is rather small. Like a hundred extra health. Woo! It's really more for the speed up than anything else. We're going to keep taking these guys' as camps. Might as well. You need to absorb as many resources as possible on a kill. When you get an opportunity like this, you should take it. Stepped on a freaking mushroom. Drop my R on him. Hot attack E. Down he goes. They got wiped there so hard. Just make it to level 11. Obviously level 16 is another nice power spike. You get even more attack range and you're constantly exalted, but level 11 is the key. Let's take a look at the graphs. Looking at damage ult enemy champions, we did have the most in the game. I'm a little surprised by that because it, the game wasn't that long. The longer the game goes, you get substantially more damage, especially like level 11 through 16 and per item. For damage taken, we had taken kind of middle of the pack for runes got pretty good value lethal tempo it looks on the low side but it doesn't count it for only partial stacks which are still giving you bonus attack speed second win over a thousand health this rune is so cracked versus poke, poke matchups anyways guys make sure you run the right setup my name is king sticks thank you for watching i'll catch you guys next time